Hello and welcome to this video. Um, this video is going to be on work kinetic energy theorem, and uh, we are going to do an extra practice problem on it. Okay, so let's begin by first of all reading the problem. A two kilogram box is pushed through a slippery floor. Its initial speed is 1.5 meters per second. If the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.7, how far does it travel? So, um, as always, before we start a problem, let's you know let's start breaking it down and what information we actually do know. So the first detail they give us in this in this uh, problem is the mass of this uh, box, which is only two kilograms. The initial speed, which is also um, initial velocity as well, is 1.5 meters per second. Okay. The coefficient of kinetic friction, mu k, is 0 0.7. Okay, notice that's unitless, so that tends to be a dead giveaway for uh, coefficient of kinetic friction. All right. And there's a last detail here that's not explicitly said or listed here, but because we need to know how far it, how far it actually travels, uh, that implies something about the final velocity. And if we want to know how far something travels, uh, that would imply the final velocity would have to stop at some point. And stopping means zero meters per second. Okay, so this is the information that we know. <clears throat> now, what is the work um, kinetic energy theorem? Okay, the work kinetic energy theorem says this. It says the net work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Well, how does kinetic energy change? Well, kinetic energy changes if there is a initial velocity and final velocity. So it's going to be one half mass times final velocity squared minus one half mass times initial velocity squared. Now let's save ourselves some time here because uh, final velocity is zero. All right, this entire term right here, one half mvf squared. Um, zero squared is zero, and then times it by anything will be zero. So this entire part or term is going to be zero. Okay, and then we can save ourselves some time there. So that leaves us with net work equals zero minus, and if I plug everything in, it's going to be one half times two kg kilograms times the initial velocity of. 1.5 meters per second squared. Okay, and if we do that, you're going to get negative 2.25 joules. Okay, this will be part one of our problem. Uh, part two of our problem is. Well, part two of our problem will be about, well, what is causing this thing to reach a velocity of zero? Well, if it's sliding because someone pushed it, and they're not pushing it constantly, but they push it, let it go, and it's sliding across the floor, um, the only thing responsible for slowing it down is actually the force of friction. Okay, And the force of friction, FFK, for force of friction, uh, kinetic friction that is, is the is defined by the mass um, times gravity times coefficient of kinetic friction. Okay. Now here, um, mg is actually represented by normal force, which is the opposite of force of gravity. And because it's the opposite of force of gravity, um, the value of gravity here is going to be um, positive, all right. So, so not negative nine point eight, but uh, positive nine point eight. So force of friction here is going to um, be 
the mass 2 kg times 9.8 meters per second squared times 0 0.7. Okay, and we're going to find out that the force of friction um, is going to be 13.72 newtons. <clears throat> okay, now let me just be clear about this. Uh, in this type of problem, um, though I said the part in blue here, uh, the work net, though I said this part, we, we start with this step first right here. Um, it's actually optional whether you want to start by calculating the net work first or you can calculate the force of friction in this problem. All right. uh, either of these you can start with first. All right. Now before we get started on the last problem here, um, let's remind ourselves that you know, there is this box being, sl being slid across the floor here. And if we have the box sliding this way, Okay. Force of friction acts only in one way. No, not force of friction acts in the opposite, sorry. Like so. So one of the things I just want to indicate is the angle between the direction is actually traveling and how friction is acting on it would be 180 degrees. Okay, so why is this uh, necessarily useful? Well, the last part of our problem is this. <clears throat> the net work is also not just defined by the change, in, uh, um, change of kinetic, uh, kinetic energy. It's also the force times the distance times cosine of the angle. And as we just mentioned a moment ago, the angle is going to be 180. Okay, we have the network. It's right here. Okay, and we're just going to plug it right here. And we also, well, this says force, but there's only one force in our entire problem. It's actually just the force of friction. And we solved that a moment ago as well. The force of friction is right here. And we're going to plug the value in right there. Okay, so what does this look like? Well, we are going to have negative 2.25 joules equals the force of friction 13.72 uh, newtons times unknown uh, distance is what we're trying to solve by the way times the cosine of 180 degrees Now, if you do um, the force times cosine of 180, uh, you'll immediately find out. Well, if you do cosine of 180 by itself, you're going to find out that cosine of 180 is negative 1. And then when you multiply that with 13.72, you're really just going to get negative 13.72 newtons times the distance. Okay? And your last step here is... You're going to divide negative 13.72 newtons on both sides to solve for the distance. Okay, and I'm going to have to fit the answer down at the bottom here. Now, when you guys do that, the distance is going to be 0 0.163 meters. Okay, and that. going to be your final answer. Okay, it's a three-parter. Uh, the last step there, written in purple, that must be the last step in this problem since we're solving for distance. Um, in terms of the other two, the one in written orange for force of friction, you can do that one first, and then you can do the uh, network in blue second, or the other way around. Or right, either way, as long as you um, uh, use the formula in purple here, that always has to be the last step in this type of problem because we are trying to find how far it goes. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful for you, helpful to you, and if you feel feel the need to replay it again to make sure that you uh, that this concept is clear, please feel free to do so. Um, hope this helps.